Here we are, 2020, yeah. trying to figure the world out. This, my friends, is the Carlos Beltran podcast. Carlos ADC. What? Holy shit. How you doing? Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. How, how you been overall? Good. I just woke up like two hours ago, you know, yeah. having a lazy Saturday morning. Nice. I love those. Trying to get some coffee in, trying to hydrate. It's going to be so hot today. Well, how hot is it over there? Tomorrow, it's going to be 111. So we have that to look forward to. Today, it should be like 107. It's so, 111 you know, for me today, but I don't have any humidity. It? I have no Ooh. humidity. Like, I just walked my dog right now for a mile. It's dry. And it like we're fine. We're doing great. She she uh, <laughs> slipped out of her uh, out of out of my hand and started chasing a cat. Oh my god! Had to run after her. It was funny. Oh my goodness! <laughs> that sounds that sounds like my dogs too. Honestly. By the way, I love the color. Uh, it makes me so happy to see it. it. It makes me super happy to know that you made it. It makes me super happy to know that, that, yeah. that we worked on it together to come up with it. And Dude, I, I was just, so nervous. I smile every time I see it. I was so nervous. I was like, man, he's going to freaking hate it. I don't know why. I like, I liked it. I thought it looked really good. But I was just like, man, Carlos is going to open it. He's going to be like, what the hell is this? Oh but my I'm God. so glad. I'm so glad that you love it. It is so much more than I thought <laughs> it would be. It's so much more. It's, I'm so it's glad. so yeah. elegant and clean and crisp. And Jesus, it's, it's, it's my favorite uh, non-wallet leather piece. Man, it was, you know, it was an experience trying to like figure it out, like how to make it. Cause I mean, I've had, like, I recently like purchased a new collar for my old dog. He's like 16. He's very, very old. Wow. Um, but I bought him a new collar. And for whatever reason, I was just like, I know what a dog collar looks like. <laughs> and then when I had to think about how to make it, I was like, I don't fucking know what a dog collar looks like. So That's I had funny. to like look at his and kind of try to reverse engineer it. So I'm really glad that it ended up being functional and it ended up looking pretty good. Uh, it's so much more than functional. <laughs> the whole thing we're having the collar, um, the buckle on the front, and then the, the D-ring on the back was genius. Uh, yeah. And the D-ring is so big. I never have to look for it. I know where it is every single time. I just grab it and hook it to the leash and I'm out. It's I'm so, so convenient, so elegant. And yeah, I'm super happy. It's because the buckle, I didn't realize how heavy the buckle was going to be. So I was just like, man, if I put the buckle and the D-ring in the same spot, it's going to be like pulling her down. Like she's going to be so uncomfortable. Oh, so no, she... I'm glad that it balanced itself out. Yeah, she never went through like uh, getting used to it, period, or, or like her trying to take it off yeah. or nothing. I just slapped it on her and she was good to go. She I'm was glad. Happy. I want to make one for my cat. She's running around. I, I think you can hear her bell. But I want to make one for her, but I'm she's a little demon, so I don't think that that's gonna work out. <laughs> My dog like, is a little can, demon. She can barely stand her little nylon one. And I'm just like, all right, girl, never mind. You're gonna end up chewing through that leather. That's funny. So <laughs> I, I'm super glad to have you here. Uh, when I thought of a podcast, I thought I need to have Stephanie on immediately, and so you're actually gonna be the third uh, episode. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I felt really, I was very honored to be invited on the podcast. So thank you so much. So yeah, so um, let's, uh, let's start with some questions. So mm -hmm. What's that? how did your leather fascination begin? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I've honestly been thinking back at it. <clears throat> and I've come to a conclusion, it's hard to pin down when like, obsessions start because they freaking creep up on you. But I'm, I feel like I started getting into EDC and leather goods, <clears throat> like in 2016, when I first started um, my graduate program, um, I moved to San Francisco, and I was away from friends. So I had to find like new hobbies other than like studying. Um, and at the time, <clears throat> because I was um, in the social sciences, I was really kind of engulfed in like theory and stuff that didn't feel real you know it, it was just like ideas so i kind of started getting into um like instagram and stuff like that and getting into edc because edc was like a real thing you know yeah, it was like tangible. something you could carry yeah it was a real tangible thing so i started following a bunch of like those like basic edc accounts you know that post like people's pictures and slowly 
I realized that my, my interests were really in like the leather goods, like the romanticism of like patina, you know, like the, just the really cool feeling of seeing somebody take a picture of something that they have with them all day, every day that they've had with them for years. And that has shown like a story, right? Like it's absorbed life and it's absorbed like oils and sweat. And as gross as that sounds, it's absorbed, <laughs> you know, the person's lived experiences. Romanticism so, is the perfect word. Yeah. The it's like, it's romantic. It's, I don't know. It's, there's something about seeing something that's been used consistently and like, you know, it's like an old faithful kind of thing. You know, you don't think about it. It's just there. And then you take it out to pay one day and you look at it and you just kind of think, oh yeah, that's my wallet, you know? And it's just this weird little moment of like, that's right. This is the thing I carry with me every day. And I really like it. I really care about it. So leather work, my interest in leather goods kind of emerged from that kind of desire for something tangible, something I could really hold on to. Um, and then it kind of spiraled out of control <laughs> into this huge leather goods collection. But along the way, I just made all these friends that were crafters or collectors or EDC enthusiasts. And it was really like a fulfilling evolution of a hobby. You know what I mean? So it really kind of started, I think, from a desire to, to do something with my hands, to have something tangible. And it kind of just evolved from there. That's awesome. Yeah, the, the romanticism of that word captivated me when you said it because it's <laughs> it's totally true. And I like patina on just a lot of things, like a like a tool. Like yeah. if like I like brand new shiny tools. Like when I go to Home Depot and I see them, I'm like, oh, I mm -hmm. want to buy some. But when I see you know a, a carpenter with a a, a a ten year old hammer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably a third handle on it and it's like yeah but the handle the wood of the handle is patina from his own like oil sweat and blood mm -hmm, like quite mm -hmm. literally because if you're in construction you get cut all the time you no know, absolutely out. and like the metal on it is pitted and a little rusty and it's got like its own unique patina to it like the romanticism to me it, it, it captivated me because it's so true that's what got me uh when it comes to leather and i that you know the other leather enthusiasts always think of patina and they think about me sometimes because mm -hmm. i take it to a construction site so they exactly. get messed up fast like i yeah. remember your piece by the way the uh shell cord which one oh heck yeah and you think you would oh i got money flowing out and you think like this would be <laughs> in in a drawer somewhere just taken out for pictures but no i carry this and i I got scratches and dents and yeah. it, it just makes it so much beautiful to me. It's like you and I collaborated because you made it and then I put my own art into it and by that, carrying it. That's that's the joy is that yeah. like collaboration. Like I I I think I get kind of sentimental like when I'm working on a project um, because when I'm making something, it's not just like I want to make this thing so I can make a quick buck. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, you know, like, oh man, I got bills to pay. Cause I mean, I do have bills to pay, but it's just like, for me, the focus when I work on a project is like this, this is something that I'm working on that I started yesterday. Um, but I'm not thinking necessarily just about how it looks, but I'm thinking about the person that it's going to, like the person that's going to use it. You know what I mean? So working on a project is exactly that. It's a collaboration. It's like a, a two-way conversation it's an evolution it's like a relationship that you build with somebody um and when it's not like that it just feels weird it just feels like i'm making you know this lifeless thing that's going to go off to someone who doesn't yeah. really care you know what i mean yeah so that's what instagram is so good because like a lot of people talk about like the negativity of social media but i i mm -hmm. think about the positivity of social exactly. media exactly like for yeah. example uh, when i talk when i say stephanie i i refer to you as a friend like oh yeah my friend made this look <laughs> at it it's so gorgeous yeah and like it, it was because of social media that 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 our interests that connected like actually it was youtube first because i first found you on youtube and then i was so happy to see that you were on instagram i was like oh my gosh no. she's got an instagram account everything is so <laughs> sexy i gotta follow <laughs> and uh so yeah it's just uh it's funny because your hobby like it probably wouldn't be a thing without it 
and like you get so much joy from it yeah no and and that's honestly where the joy comes from it's just like it's and i think that's why i'm i'm trying to refine the work more and more as i go along is that i'm building like stronger relationships with people and stronger friendships like it's weird because people will say you know um people will call you know, the people that they're working with customers. And that just feels weird to me because yeah, some of them are customers. Like some of them aren't necessarily interested in like talking about the leather or like checking in on like the progress. You know what I mean? Like every once in a while, it's like, I'll send a progress picture and it's just like, Oh, that's nice. Thanks. You know, (laughs) you know, and it's just like dead silence, like crickets. But most of the time, you know, people that I make stuff for are, are people that already have like three or four things for me. So as I continue to work with them, it's like, I want to do nicer work for my friends. You know what I mean? For the Mm -hmm. people that I have these really great relationships with. And it's like, well, let me try this and let me do that. And I'm going to take them by surprise. I'm going to add a little bit, you know, I'm going to add a crease here, a crease there. I'm going to try sanding, you know, um, a little bit longer. I'm going to try this new technique where it's like every new order from a friend, I want I want them to, to see something different, like more improvement. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's not just about like me honing in like the details that I like, but it's also like, I want to do well by the people who keep coming back and keep ordering, you know, more and more leather goods for me, because yeah. I think that's, that's what's important. Like it's building those relationships and it's, and it's keeping those friendships and enjoying the process, you know, that happens in between. Yeah, I have four pieces and I want I know. I'm thinking about the combo though, because I want um, a matching pouch, a matching minimalist, and with a matching hook uh, for the keys. So I want yeah. all those three, but I want them all matching. So I got, I'm thinking about the combo. You're like becoming Cody. <laughs> You're becoming Cody. I don't think I, I can ever afford. I don't think I can ever afford to be that bad. Uh, no, it always is fun me when Cody gets an order. And oh my it's like god! Five wallets that are color coordinated. How big is your yeah. collection, by the way? Because Cody's Mine? insane. Yeah, Cody's Cody probably has like three hundred wallets. No, I think more. Like I like if he needs to run out of his house, like he's gonna be loaded up like a burro, like just bags, <laughs> bags and bags, just filled with. I wallets. mean, he he bites dedicated toads and bags for his yeah. collection. I mean, he's, that's forward thinking. He's getting yeah. ready for like an escape yeah. plan from his house. <laughs> no, so how I how think, big is yours? What, what would you say? Because I know you, you, um, you know, slim it down every now and then. I do, how big is I it? Do. Um, right now it's probably like 40. It was like 60, but right now it's 40. And it's more like I have a rotation of maybe like eight of them um, that aren't mine. But oh, my cat is very loud in the background i'm sorry she's that. fine it's awesome <laughs> no but i i have like 40 wallets um in my collection right now but i wow. rotate through very few of them at this point um mostly just ones that i really want because i'm i'm realizing that the more wallets i've collected the less patina i'm getting on them and i'm really starting to to focus on getting good wear on my pieces so i try to slim down some of them and i've rehomed a few because I know there are people who are more dedicated about carrying one single wallet every single day. And I figured like, okay, yeah, this wallet deserves to be carried every day. But right now I'm sitting at like 40 and then of my own like little ugly prototypes, I have like eight. So Hmm. my collecting habits are getting a little wonky because I'm just keeping everything that I don't feel like should be sold or is nice enough to be sold. So it's becoming a mess at my house. You should have a, like, uh, I wear ants and belts. I, I, I'm trying mm-hmm. to get, like, a nice belt eventually. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. for now, I wear ants and belts. And they do, like, um, what do you call them? Imperfect uh, oh, belts. Yeah. And they, they do sales on them. That's so, true. And it will have something very minor, like, yeah. like, uh, 
I don't know, like a little burn on the buckle and it'd be mm-hmm. like, you know, 20, 30% off. And that's the ones I buy. Cause I'm going to, I'm yeah. going to beat the crap out of them anyway. No, that's at work. very true. That's so that's very the true. ones I, I buy. People call them like sample sales, like crafters something like call that. them, you know, like something like that. That's very, maybe true. you should I think about that in the future. If you want to sell yeah. some of those, cause I'm sure uh, a lot of people would buy them. That's uh, true. I'm just super picky. That's I why know because you don't want so that because you don't yeah. want that out there. So maybe yeah. put like an extra stamp on it or don't stamp them. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud. Be like, uh, I don't know who made this. Just, just buy it. <laughs> I didn't make it. Just buy it's it. twenty dollars <laughs> off because I need to buy more leather. Oh By the God. way, I have the same pen you have, and uh, I don't even know what it's called or nothing. Dude. And my good friend Brad gave it to me recently. Really? He gave it to me for re- he sent it to me for review but he had the oh, intention nice. of giving it to me mm-hmm. uh, from the beginning which is sneaky because he's like well now you can't say no because <laughs> you own it uh so yeah what's you. it called what's that pen called it's oh i don't have the wrap it's um it's from machine era man where is the i don't have the plastic anymore my girlfriend like set this up for me because i'm an idiot i don't i i was like it came in like different parts and i was just like uh babe i don't know this is a fountain pen. Can you help me? So she set it up for me. And I think she walked away with the, the name. Um, I just know that it's from Machine Era. And I think it's their fountain pen. I don't know. It came with a conversion kit. I really don't know. I got yeah, this this it's, morning. It's super cool. It has a ballpoint. You can yeah. put a ballpoint on it, yeah. which is, I mean, I wouldn't use it because I'm a fountain pen kind of guy you nowadays. I'm a fountain pen. Yeah, freak. which is cool. Uh, yeah, I just want we have matching pens now. I know it's very cool. This was sent by uh, one of our mutual friends. I won't I won't out him, but oh, okay. this was sent by a mutual friend as a gift. And That's awesome. Yeah, I know. So funny. I mean, these are not cheap. I'm sure. No, like, I don't think so. A really nice, it solid like, brass. It pen. looks like a hundred and ten dollars, hundred twenty dollars yeah. to me. I don't know. But he was very sweet about it. So I'm. But the I'm machining very of the threading is so pleasant. Oh my God. I was like, just doing this. It's so hard to get me- like metal threads that good. I know. Like that so they don't hard. patch and they don't grind. Wow. It's I know. Just... It's very nicely done. I put the, um, the fountain pen in there already and it's got like, um, like a purple ink. So I'm super excited. I've been wanting a fountain pen, like an EDC fountain pen for such a long time. And I couldn't find one that I actually like clicked with. And this mm-hmm. one is just gorgeous. So I'm going to be carrying this and hopefully yeah. getting a nice patina on the brass. To me, that's perfect because it doesn't have a pocket clip and you can just mm-hmm. throw it in your pocket because I have so yeah. many pocket clips. Uh, by the way, carrying a PM2 today. Nice. So I got one clip and then I got your keys, which is another clip. But I, <laughs> I do that on my loop, you know? Yeah. And so you already got two clips. So I don't. Do, so, you, carry yeah. a, do you carry a belt? Or I do have, you wear a belt? Every I day? wear a belt. Uh, Almost every day. Right now, I'm wearing uh, running shorts because so I just went on a walk. Because uh, so, I recently yeah. stretched out. I, I had just been looping this into, like, my pant loop uh, or my belt loop. But uh-huh. I recently stretched out, like, the actual hook. So now I hook it onto my, my belt, and it's changed my life. I that's feel like a dumbass smart. for not doing that before. I'm going to do that. Yeah, that's <laughs> Like, that's what they're for. But yeah. I was like, no, it's going to scratch my belt up. But, yeah. no, it actually it works out super nicely. Well, my belts are all scratched up. I'm thinking about getting a belt. That's why I asked on the yeah. um, on the group chat. Yeah. You know, what's a good one? It's just, you know. I have, um, I'm it. not wearing it right now because I'm super lazy at the house. But I have <laughs> a, a belt. I have two uh, uh, belts that I use most frequently um, that are like handmade. One of them is from, um, one of them is like an oak bark tanned belt that's super freaking beefy from Carmine Jack. And then one of them is like an American bridal um, leather from Salazar and Sons. And they're both gorgeous. So wow. definitely two great makers to, to look at for belts. Mm. They yeah, do I'm a have great to. And, I, and those I would only wear like to go out or maybe grocery shop. I wouldn't take them to work. Uh, eventually, eventually they would make it to work. It's kind of like when I buy boots, like <laughs> I wear them for a year out and about and then mm-hmm. I take them to work. Yeah. Once they get like a couple scratches, you're like, all right, screw it. I'm going to wear it to work. Yeah. So <laughs> what, what led you to start? Um, it's, it's less of a review, more like a showing off. What, what led mm-hmm. you to show off your collection pieces on, on the YouTube 
platform? Honestly, what made me want to do it is that I saw like no reviews. Like I saw like Steve Montelli was doing like wallet reviews and looking at like wallets like up close, but it was like, that was it. Like mm -hmm. it was when I started getting into leather goods, he was like the only guy that was doing um, wallet reviews. Now you can like Google minimalist wallet and there's like a bunch of people that are reviewing um, yeah. minimalist wallets. But at the time it just like, I wanted more content and I realized, you know, like if, if other people have, if I have these questions, you know, about like hand stitching or like, let me look at, you know, show me shell up close, you know, if I have those questions, then other people are going to have those questions, you know, and, and with leather work, it's really hard to, um, to find, you know, makers like on Instagram that give you like a really up close and personal look at either the leathers or the stitching, um, you know, and so I just kind of decided to do it. Like my first couple of videos were like, I wasn't even talking, you know, it was just like me and my camera and the wallet, like super up close. And it was just looking at, you know, the color of the leather, the textures of the leather, the stitching. And I figured if, if I was looking for that, somebody else was looking for that. And if somebody else was looking for that, it's because they really needed help for, yeah. you know, like justifying buying a $200 shell wallet you know what i yeah. mean because that's a lot of money and yeah. there was just nothing on the internet you know looking at those things so i figured i might as well do it and it became something i really enjoyed um and i still enjoy it um but then i ended up going down the rabbit hole buying like 80 different wallets so you know there was a trade-off there you know it was a little out of control but it was a lot of fun that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for example, you're, you're very much right. There's not a whole lot of leather reviews out there. Uh, and I can tell because my Finnegan review is my most watched video. At That's 4, a really good review though. 4,000 plus views. Yeah. Uh, which is pretty cool. And yeah, it's because no one's out there uh, reviewing them. And I can't find my Finnegan. So I'm a little sad about oh, no. that. I don't know where I left it because oh, I wanted no. to ch switch out from uh, your folding to the Finnegan just because I want to get, we talked about russet and I wanted to get mm -hmm. more patina on it and take some pictures yeah. to show them to you. And yeah, I couldn't find it. So Bella's probably that. sweating right now. She's I like, oh, know. Crap. <laughs> he noticed that. He it noticed. <laughs> I, I, it smells, leather smells so good. I, I, yeah. I, she's always smelling my pocket when I carry something like shell. You know, and when you get like a good, um, like a really nicely worn in russet, that's super rare. Like that's like the, the sweet spot for russet because russet can be all sorts of different shades of, you know, natural and honey and like light brown. Like I've noticed that I'll order russet and it'll be like super pale one time and then I'll mm -hmm. order it again. And then it's like a really beautiful honey color. So once you get like a good patina on it and it's like nice and toasty, that's when it's the most beautiful. I think so. So too. Bella, Bella needs to show you where she hid <laughs> that wallet. <laughs> uh, no, it's probably under our couch somewhere. It's probably. So I have uh, another question. I might have to read what it, which sucks. No, but, go for it. Uh, let's see. Let me see if I even write, wrote it right. So how does it make you feel to have ex to like have it to explain your position as an activist from time to time on Instagram? Because when I personally uh, uh, looked look for you and i found you for example mm -hmm. it says lesbian you see right there and that explains mm -hmm. what you're about down here on your bio yeah. so i yeah. never needed an explanation of why you were doing what you were doing like it's right there it's on your name and it's on your bio yeah so, like does it bother you to like have to explain it every now and then no i mean it it, it doesn't bother me i think people will follow um my instagram account just because they see the pictures um, sometimes when you read like a, a username, it makes sense to the person that wrote it, but you read it real quick and you're like, I don't know, that's gibberish. I don't know what that says, but I'm going to yeah. follow, you know? So it doesn't necessarily bother me because, you know, there's a lot of leather crafters or EDC people that don't put that out there, you know? So it's like, if that bothers someone that recently followed, then they can probably find somebody else that makes something similar, you know, out of similar leather or post similar EDC pictures <laughs> and they can probably follow them. Um, it doesn't necessarily bother me. I just think it's kind of funny because it is so out in the open. So I'm not sure, you know, how people have gone by so long not noticing 
that that's what I'm about. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it doesn't bother me, but it is kind of hilarious. Yeah. I love your, I love your bio by the way. And I hate mine. Like I always try and change it up a little <laughs> now and then, but I still dislike mine. Like, like what am I about? Uh, so many things. How could I explain it into <laughs> sentences, but you have it on perfectly. And I love the Spanish part. Like I haven't read it in a while, but you have a little bit of Spanish in there just enough to let people know, Hey, so yeah. Mexicana way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's why, you know, I'm looking to get um, another stamp made. Mm -hmm. um, that says cariñosamente hecho a mano so that I can stamp it on like the inside of a wallet where it's not necessarily right. out in the open for people to see but it's just so that you know you know that I put a lot of love into that wallet like lovingly yeah. made by hand it's not just that I'm you know robotically making stuff it's that I'm really you know pouring my my gay Mexican heart and soul into your leather goods and, and it shows <laughs> I hope so I hope so But, you know, I want to I wanna just incorporate that more and more because, you know, crafting for me was something I started doing. And then I, I, I realized after I started that it was really meaningful for me because my whole family, you know, are farm workers. They immigrated here, you know, in the early 60s um, after my grandpa stopped working as a bracero, once the bracero program ended. Um, they immigrated here and my aunts and my uncles and my mom, you know, started working, you know, picking strawberries, picking apples, you know, picking lettuce, like everything. They were like 10 years old and they started working as farm workers. So for me, <clears throat> being able to work with my hands in, you know, making small other goods is I think a real big privilege. Um, I never had to work, you know, picking strawberries. I never had to, to work, you know, 10 hour days in the sun, you know, bent over, bending over again and again and again. I never had to do that um, because my mom worked so hard to provide for us. So being able to work with leather and then having, you know, a little bit of a, an audience, um, it for me is a really big privilege. Um, and it's a privilege that my family was never afforded. So if I can be on social media doing something that I genuinely enjoy, you know, speaking from a position of privilege and just kind of highlighting, you know, some of the things that are very passionate, that I'm very passionate about that are very important to me because of my family, um, then I'm going to do it, you know, and I've gotten so much support from so many people who are like, you know, I, my, my family are farm workers and, you know, my, my grandpa was a farm worker and people that just, you know, slide into my DMs and like open up and really share with me all of these stories, you know, of struggle. And it's like, man, that's what I'm here for. You know, if we can make connection, if we can be there for each other, if we can support each other, you know, and, and highlight like these very, you know, vulnerable workers and really have a conversation, then I'm so beyond happy to be able to do that. You know, the EDC community can sometimes be a little, a little, um, a little homogeneous, like a little of the same, you know, like mm -hmm. everything kind of feels the same. It's kind of the same mm -hmm. picture. It's kind of the same vibe, you know, and, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but if I can kind of, you know, stick out a little bit and make a little bit of space for people who feel, you know, like maybe they're not represented in the community, then, then I'm happy to do that. And I'm happy to, to connect with people in that way, you know? That's so nice. That's so awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I feel a little bit of the same way. Obviously, we all have our own uh, stories, but I do feel like there's a little bit of weight on your shoulders of you have to represent like where you're coming from. You have to represent yeah. like the, the sacrifice that our parents and their parents made yeah. just to get us a little bit closer to that starting line that other people are starting at, you know, mm -hmm. and Yeah, it's it, coming from you. It, like, it resonates with me a whole bunch. And it, it's so cool. And we have to mention that every now and then. Uh, I was on an, a different podcast, the DCC mm -hmm. podcast. And mm -hmm. at the end, he was like, oh, yeah. And uh, we have to get together with this other guy. He's also a minority. He's black. And, I, and like, I was like, I realized then I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm a minority. <laughs> <laughs> You forget and, sometimes. Yeah, right? and EDCC is uh, from the Philippines, yeah. and I'm Mexican, like straight up, you know, born yeah. and raised over there, uh, uh -huh. kind of Mexican. And so, yeah, but 
yeah, we do we do have to represent, you know, yeah. a little bit more. But yeah. And it um, and it's so easy to forget when you're in like this digital setting, you know, like social yeah. media. It's so easy to forget, especially when you're photographing, you know, items. Your hands, your items. Yeah. Or... Yeah. So it's it's very easy to forget. But it's weird because when you do represent in that way, I feel like it really it changes something for for people who have been, you know, posting, but not necessarily comfortable saying, oh, I'm Mexican or I'm gay, you know, um, yeah. when you kind of, when you're upfront about it, you know, and you're representing who you are, it kind of opens doors for other people, you know? Yeah. And it makes, makes them more feel inviting, good. more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that EDC community is actually a pretty positive one. And yeah. like the majority of the time and the majority of people, like, uh, the reason I'm doing the podcast is because I have so many friends and like, I can just holler at them and be like, yeah, I'll yeah. be on for an hour. I'll give you an hour of my <laughs> life. Cause that's what they're doing. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, we're all busy. Like I haven't even exactly. loaded up this pen. I want to so bad. I got it like on Tuesday to this day. I haven't been able to load a pen. It <laughs> takes 15 seconds. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. So do you ever plan on uh, like crafting full time and like doing, uh, you know, content creating and crafting full time? You know, I would love to craft full time because I genuinely do enjoy it. Um, lately, I've been crafting like mm, half of the week, like every spare moment that I have. I've been working on orders because unfortunately, I'm like really behind on mm -hmm. um orders that came in you know like a month two months ago um so i'm trying to trying to work double time to get everything done um but i found that in kind of you know my cat is really being so no, loud I, I can't even hear him <laughs> oh my, you can't thank god well i can but i have like studio time. monitors <laughs> no but um i found that while working um like really hard at catching up with orders that i i really do enjoy it even when i'm really tired i really do enjoy it it's like i look forward to crafting every single day so much it gives me so much joy so i would absolutely love to craft full time um and i'm hoping to kind of move towards that because you know my parents are really old and i do a lot of caretaking for them um so if i can craft full time and take care of my elderly parents that would honestly be perfect um and i think you know in the next couple of months i might be getting there um it looks like orders have been really steady and i've been able to 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 do a really good job at, at managing them all things considered so i'm really hoping to go full time sometime soon um i'm still very small scale like this is just a very small bench i have very few tools um but i'm really kind of hoping to to expand a little further and um, stock up the Etsy store when it's finally open again <laughs> and all that good stuff. So yeah, I would love to go full time. I would That's funny because it. like on your Instagram account, it says books are closed and it's been that way for quite some time, right? Yeah. It's been like that for like two months. So it's just but people, like, people sneaking I'm, in orders. Um, well, yeah. Usually when I'm waiting for stuff to come uh -huh. in, like people, you know, it's, it's hard because you've been waiting a really long time. You know, no. you've been waiting a month or two um, for, for, you were waiting like a month or two for your collar, you know? And when we get down to brass tacks, it's like, okay, what leather do we need? You know, because we never talked about it because I'm a dummy and I never ask. So then I have to like, for individual people, you know, I have to clarify, hey, do, did you still want this leather or did you want something else? Mm -hmm. So then that whole process of like, okay, let me order that because I actually don't have that in stock or I ran out, so let me order that. And that ends up being like a week to a two week process with, mm -hmm. with the COVID delays. Mm -hmm. um, so then I end up having like downtime in between, you mm -hmm. know? And it's like, if I know that someone's been waiting on me, like saying, hey, when are you going to open up? Where are you going to open up? <laughs> then I can be like, hey, actually, you know that wallet that you wanted? I can actually make it this week. Are you down? And they're like, heck yeah. So then it's been kind of like sneaking orders in, but also like I have a week of time or I yeah. don't have any orders to work on, you know? Um, so I'm able to kind of sneakily get people in there every once in a while. But I'm I'm literally like three orders away from being done with my books. That's so I'm awesome. Really, really excited. Yeah. So are you gonna write it on your Instagram? Books are open. 
Yeah. And I then can't it starts all over that. again. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's going to start all over again. I got to I gotta figure it out. I got to figure it out because I do want another minimalist. Uh, yeah. A little bit more sp- space on it because I know you're doing mm-hmm. some um, extra large or what are you calling them? The ones with extra um, space. The ones with, I don't know. I honestly am bad at naming the wallets. I'm going to start giving names. <laughs> I know. And I've been pitching like all these different ideas to my girlfriend and she's like, that's too complicated. I don't like that. Or, that's you know, nice. to my brother. And he's like, yeah, I don't know about that one. I think I'm going to start giving them names soon. Um, it's just hard to stick with like a theme, you know, mm-hmm. like, I was you know, thinking ben, female names. Ben has birds. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. I was my brother was like names. lesbians. Lesbian just names? Name them after lesbians. And I'm like, I don't know if Ellen is just going <laughs> to fit in there. <laughs> but, um. I'm a no, history I, buff, so I might name them after um, yeah, significant his, years, yeah. you know? Yeah. This one's Alexander the Great. This one, exactly. This is Cher. <laughs> this is she Cher. was born in... <laughs> <laughs> this is Genghis gonna, Khan. No big gonna, deal. <laughs> yes. This is Hua Mulan. <laughs> I, just watched, I just watched Mulan yesterday, so yeah. I'm like stuck on Is that. it good? It's, you know, I can see why people are not super happy with it, mm-hmm. but... You know, there was a little, a little gay tension in there. So that won me Oof. over, you know, Oof. there was a little like, Ooh, okay. That won me over. So I liked I, how, I, I liked it. I liked how pe- some people got up and this is probably, you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, like triggering, but I like how some <laughs> people got, uh, up in arms because of the last kiss in star Wars. Oh, I know. Two girls just go up to each other and kiss. And, like, people were up in arms. I'm like, what the fuck? They're, they're out in space. I'm like, come people. on, guys. <laughs> they're out I, in space. I feel... You don't think there's girl and girl in action in space? Exactly. <laughs> people, are, people are silly. I'm like, there's you probably really like... think that in this universe, yeah. there's not, like, some inter-alien fucking... So weird. Sorry. I probably shouldn't be cussing, but you know, it's like, come on. I guys. take it out if you want, but I'm, I'm <laughs> leaving them. I'm leaving all mine in. Oh yeah, I no just worries. thought that was funny, but no, yeah, I think I'll wa- I think I'll give it a watch now that 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 you give it, it a go. But so. I mean, for thirty dollars, it is a gamble. It's thirty dollars. It's thirty dollars on Disney Plus. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I doing know. That. I watched it for the nostalgia, but then I was like, I mean, twenty bucks, that. fifteen bucks tops. I don't know. It's it's a so so. I thought it was fifteen. I I would have done it for. 15. Oh no! I for fifteen, it would have been worth it. But it was just it was. It's interesting to see the live action yeah. versions of all the movies. That I, I, I grew say up that, on. but when my wife and I go to the movies, I spend like sixty dollars. <laughs> okay, but literally, same. But like a sixty dollars, you get tickets. You you get a nice seat. You get dinner, like because yeah. I go to a dining theater, and like it's oh, a nice wow, really? pleasant night. Yeah. Ooh. Well, I used to. I think they opened it again. So I'm watching um, Black Widow pretty soon. Well, I want to watch Black Widow. So, I'm honestly probably going to watch. Yeah. I'm probably going to watch as too. many movies as I can once I'm able to. Wonder Woman, too. I know. That Wonder one's Woman coming out, Black too. Widow. The first one was so good. Uh, yeah, no? it was good. It wasn't like I wouldn't rewatch it like I do some Marvel yeah, movies. But true. it was good for like their first try uh dc making like a yes, big blockbuster that's lady why i movie. was surprised i'm like you guys yeah. didn't you guys didn't mess up this time yeah like but y'all like, have been messing up so much dc you actually did a good job what i'd surprised. like from superhero movies is when they can do a good villain yeah and like the villain no, for absolutely. wonder woman it was so anticlimactic. it was it, that was. it was like eh. yeah that everything villain- wonder woman did was awesome and uh, all the island scenes, that was awesome. The funniness <laughs> to it, the lightheartedness to it was awesome. But just yeah, like, yeah. The you know, there was, was no climax. It was just like, uh. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> I agree. Absolutely. So, I'm anxious. I'm nervous about the new Batman movie, not to like steer us into like uncharted movie-verse. territories. <laughs> I am so stressed. I'm like, stop, DC. Just stop while you're ahead. But anyways, what were you going to say? It, the, the preview looked okay. And I think he would make a good young Batman. I don't think he would yeah. make the old, dark, uh, beaten Batman. 
No. There's no way. Maybe in 10 years he can. Maybe. But a young Batman, he can do. Because if you, if you watch, like, the cartoons, I forget which Batman it was. But it was when, like, the, the Joker was more of a homeless person. Oh, I don't remember. And he was a young Batman. And he reminds mm -hmm. me a lot of that Batman. Oh, you know? I see. But he doesn't mm -hmm. remind me of, like, the comic, yeah. Uh, you know, Batman in his 40s, 50s guy. He's yeah, no, absolutely. You know, like Ben Affleck does. He looks yeah. defeated. He looks gigantic. He looks, and like, even in like his regular persona, he's like. Yeah, he looks wrecked. Yeah. I feel bad saying that because yeah. I know that he's He looks wrecked. That's, I was I'm trying like, to make the faces, but I can't. Yeah, no, he looks wrecked. But that's why he made a good older Batman. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but this no, new did, guy, I, like I think he Batman. can play the, the, the younger Batman, you know? Yeah. Before losing, you know, a couple Robins. <laughs> Jeez. And After like in the worst Robins, way possible. You know, yeah, absolutely. That, he can't play that. <laughs> I don't think so. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's fun. I think it's fun uh, them experimenting yeah. and trying to move forward in a different way. Mm -hmm. Like Marvel got it right from like the beginning and that's cool. But, you know, this he's trying to figure it out. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Marvel had that luck. They like did really well with like Iron Man and yeah. Captain America. They laid out the right foundation for yeah, a big really universe. Did. Yeah, they really which did. Which is cool. Like I've been, oh man, my wife and I have been watching every Marvel movie on the movie theater ever since they started back in. It's pretty epic. Like, like going on like days. opening day is epic. Yeah. Like when we started yeah. watching, we were just hanging out. And now we've been married for years and we're still watching. Oh, that's really cute. Yeah. That's but awesome. That's, if, if we're going to go back to leather, what are like some must tries for people starting out in their leather venture? Maybe they have a wallet made by hand because they saw it on Instagram, but now they mm -hmm. want to they want to go deeper. What are like some must tries in leather? Then I'll give my I think. I think... Like the first couple of leathers you should try are like that will get you hooked on leather goods is probably like Chromexel. That's like the one that got me. I think my first leather, like handmade um, leather wallet, and I don't even remember what brand it was, was a Chromexel wallet. And my life has never been the same since. Like the smell and the feel of Chromexel is really, really incredible. Um, and even though it's like a, a base, the base tannage is a chrome tan, um, it's still, because it has a vegetable retannage, it develops a really beautiful patina. It feels really good in the hand. Um, and I think that's a really great, like, must try first leather. And then after that, I think to get more acquainted with um, like a wider variety of leathers, a good veg tan, like a good solid, maybe not natural, like dry veg tan, because that is a whole process to like get it to really darken. But like just like a good solid Italian veg tan, like Botero or like Dakota. This one is um, uh, a new leather that I'm trying out that I'm like obsessed with. This is um, an Italian tannery called La Perla Asura uh, produces this leather and it's so buttery and beautiful. Um, so this is definitely one of those veg tans that I would suggest. But a good Italian veg tan like Pueblo, Botero, or Dakota would be the second. So I think mm -hmm. they should go uh, rusted harness almost right away so that they get that quick satisfaction of yeah. putting their own patina. That's a good one. Because like you carry that a couple of days and it's a totally different wallet. You it carry really that for is. a week and it's a totally different color. Yeah. You carry that for a month and it's your wallet. Nobody has that wallet. It looks mm -hmm. nothing like anybody else's wallet. Yeah, so I think exactly. uh, that to get him hooked fast. Like get it in the patina quick. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Ghost is kind of weird because the, the piece that I got, it just didn't, uh, it just didn't do it for me. Perhaps I, I should have gone for a different color, but I went Ghost Mint. And it just wasn't my thing. Oh, yeah. But ghost, I think well, that ghost is difficult because the wax layer is so thick that it can flake off. Mm -hmm. You know it what I mean? It did flake off kind of falls in a couple off. spots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so not that, but I would go um, harness, rusted harness right away. And yeah. then I would go anything Pueblo. Man, Pueblo such a good leather. 
and and I think knife guys would like it because it almost look like looks like a blade that's been stonewashed. Yeah, it, <laughs> it is really incredible. I have um, this. This is like a little. I don't know if you can see it because the lighting is super bad back here. But this is like a little um, pueblo um, coin slip that I made, and this is I think walnut, but it looks so good now that it's been carried. Like it's shiny, and it's smooth. And it's developing a really beautiful patina. So Pueblo is, yeah, Pueblo is really, really nice. I know some people get burnt out on Pueblo because it's like everywhere, but it really wears in so beautifully and develops so much character. I agree. And yeah, so yeah I think that's what I'm going to do next on, on my combo, but I'm, t I'm still thinking. So I don't know. And I want something, <laughs> and I want something with like the inside is like a total contrast. So yeah. something, um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the one you, you made, the minimalist I have with Ortesia mm -hmm. on it was beautiful. It's beautiful. I still have it somewhere. <laughs> it looks so much better now than it did when it was new. You've put so much mileage on that thing. It looks so good. Not really. It just, what happened is it was the summer and I was working outside every day. <laughs> That'll yeah. do it. That, yeah. that will do it. A Southwest uh, summer will absolutely do a lot of uh, patina. So... The other thing I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. I know my answer, uh, but why, or if you do, why do you think that hand stitching is like a superior stitching to machine stitching? Ooh. Well, when I first started collecting leather goods, I didn't think there was that much of a difference. Um, and maybe I was a little less biased back then because I was just collecting leather goods. I wasn't necessarily making them, you know what I mean? Um, but when I first started collecting leather goods, I was like, eh, you know, a stitch is a stitch. It doesn't matter. Um, it's going to hold up perfectly fine. But now that I make leather goods um, and that I've seen how uh, machine stitching unravels, I get stressed when I see like a really expensive machine stitched wallet because that thread unravels like nobody's business. It just like completely doo -doo 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 -doo, like comes undone. Um, and it's, you know, depending on people's philosophy, you know, you buy a wallet, you use it until it breaks and then you buy a new one. But for me, one of the things that I enjoy the most about making wallets is the hand stitching aspect because I have to do it slowly. I have to do it carefully and I have to do it exactly the same every single time. And when I first started crafting, I made myself a hand-stitched um, wallet, like one of my first wallets ever. And then I didn't like the color of the thread after I had stitched it. And me, being a weirdo that doesn't think things through, I undid the entire thing and re-stitched it. And getting that thread out of the holes was absolutely horrifying. Like getting the thread to come out, like that hand stitch thread to come out literally took me like a half hour for a small wallet like this, like just a stitch that's like boop, boop, boop. So it, I learned very quickly that, that hand stitching is definitely more durable. Um, and it's, I think for people who don't want to replace their wallet, um, someone who wants to use the same wallet forever, you know what I mean? Because it's just, there's just no way that that hand stitch is going to come undone, especially if you use something incredibly durable like Tiger Thread. There's just no way that you're ever going to wear through that thread. Um, so I guess now that I make stuff, I do agree that hand stitching is superior, but it all depends on people's lifestyles, you know, like what they actually need in an everyday use item. For me, I don't want to throw away a wallet. I want that wallet to be serviceable if that thread does ever break. Um, I want that wallet to last me as long as I'm alive. Um, so I would agree that hand stitching is, um, is superior in, te in terms of durability and in many ways in terms of aesthetics. Yep. But I'm biased now. So take You're that biased. I'm not salt. biased. I haven't made anything. <laughs> uh, I'm not planning on doing it anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but this is my reasoning and obviously yours is more intricate because you'll know a whole lot more than I do. Uh, but my reasoning behind it is the romanticism of somebody spending that much freaking time 
yeah. on something where you just throw plastic and paper inside of. Yeah. Like the the intricacy of every stitch, the symmetry of your work is so fantastic to me. It's like <laughs> if you have nothing to do, you pull out your wallet and like you caress it and look at the stitchings. <laughs> And you think about the amount of work that went into it. Like I'm a construction worker. Like I look at things and I see work, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly. And no, like absolutely. The, the, the amount of work that it must have taken to polish those edges, like every stitch is just identical to the one previous to it. Just <laughs> so beautiful. And like, I haven't seen machine stitching mm -hmm. get anywhere close. Yeah, and there's and there's it, no romanticness about mm -hmm. it. There's no artistry behind it. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Like the guy working the machine is an artist. I respect him. I'll shake your hand. I'll have mm -hmm. you on my podcast. But it's not <laughs> the same, you know. Yeah, and when people have like a very high quality machine to sew with, and they have those um, tolerances dialed in super well, like Niwa. Oh my God, Niwa from Japan does some beautiful machine stitching and it looks durable and clean and crisp and i believe that his machine stitching would last forever you know but you really have to i think with machine stitching you really have to invest and this obviously i don't machine stitch so i this could be completely wrong but i feel like you have to invest in a really high quality machine and you really have to spend a lot of time honing in that machine and dialing in all of those little tolerances so that when the needle goes through and into the back side of the stitch, it doesn't just blow out the leather. Because that's unfortunately sometimes what happens when um, something is machine stitched very quickly is that, you know, the needle will puncture the leather. And on the back side, you know, where the, the needle's coming into, you get just a really weird look. Um, so I think with machine stitching, you really have to, um, it's, very labor intensive to do it very, very cleanly and very well. Um, so I'm sure a super high quality machine would, would give you super beautiful and durable results. But I personally love stitching. Like the, I made a huge wallet um, a couple of weeks ago for a friend of mine, Mark. And that thing had probably like 60 to 70 stitch. No, no, not 60 to 70. It probably had like double the amount of stitches that your dog collar did. Um, wow. So like 600 stitches, give mm -hmm. or take, you know, and it took hours to get that thing done. But the satisfaction that I felt afterwards, like knowing that I did each stitch exactly like the last one, you know, like the, the process, mm -hmm. like the muscle memory is just super, it feels really good. And knowing that if, you know, by any chance, he does have any issues with that stitching, he'll have like two stitches undone and that's it, yeah. you know, yeah. as opposed to the whole row of stitching just popping off. Yeah. Cause each you know? one's like tying it. Yeah. That's super cool. Learning, learning about this stuff. Cause I, I a lot of things you're, you're like referring to and saying like, I didn't know. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, don't believe me. Cause I'm just pretending. Don't to believe me. Cause <laughs> No, this is gospel woman. <laughs> I will believe it. But I do. I love like, that's what really made me fall in love with leather goods when I was collecting like Ben's stitching, Benjamin bought his yeah. stitching was so beautiful yeah. and precise. And like the beefy thread that he used, it just, it looked so good. And knowing that he spent, you know, however long it took him to stitch up a wren, you know, doing it just exactly each stitch exactly yeah. like the one before it, it just, it meant a lot to me to have that kind of attention to detail put into, you know, and, my wren or my wax wing. Yeah. And the, the, the little cow inside of it and the little Man, cow has the letter B stamped on cow. her butt. It is, <laughs> it is such an amazing detail. It is one of my mm -hmm. favorite details of all time. It's inside. You're never going to see it. You're never exactly. going to notice it. I notice it. I know exactly. it's there. I think it's important. <laughs> it's so cool to have uh, like that level of thinking of, of your craft mm -hmm. of like giving mm -hmm. that little something to the one who's going to notice exactly. right? to the one who's going to appreciate it. Just giving that it's like a wink, you know, like. Mm -hmm. hey, Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what those are the things that got me hooked as a collector. 
was those little details and just the amount of time that I could imagine people putting into um, the wallets that I was buying, you know, like you could yeah. see it was like a physical manifestation of their affection, of their passion. Such a great way doing, of putting it, you know? Yeah. So it was uh, it like straight through the freaking heart. Like I just fell in love with it. That's awesome. This has been a great episode. I am so glad <laughs> I had you on. There's, there's so many more things that I'd like to talk about. Um, but I'm sure I'll have you on again if you wanted to. <laughs> no, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, dude. So yeah, that was awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, th- there's going to be episode, I think three. And I haven't even uploaded an episode yet. Damn, dude. You're killing it, Carlos. You're killing it. <laughs> Thank you. By the way, wristwatch check. That's a Seiko. That, this, is, this is a Seiko SARB. Yeah, um, Saab. 033. Yeah, they're discontinued now. Yeah, I know. A, I I'm regret like not buying one. Yeah, it's very old and very beat up. And it's on a, a, a beautiful strap made by my friend Benjamin Crump. It's like very distressed looking. It looks really, really good on the, the black dial. That's so cool. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to make that you haven't made? Um, you know what? There's a lot of stuff that I want to make. I really want to learn how to make like bifolds. Um, one of I was going to the... ask you about that because like I'd like to buy a, a wallet for my dad, but I don't mm-hmm. see him going away from like that classic bifold yeah. with the, with the big pocket. Yeah. No, I'm going to, I'm actually one of the gentlemen that's um, on a wait list for when my books finally open um, is a gentleman that's asking for a bifold with like, um, like a very unique, uh, like card design. So I'm going to be learning how to make a bifold, learning how to skive down and thin down those pockets. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also likely going to make a mid wallet soon, which should be terrifying and very fun. So those really big, tall wallets with like the six Mm -hmm. pockets on the inside so i'm hopefully gonna do that soon um but i really honestly i really want to learn how to make bags oh my god yeah i really would love to make a hand stitched bag i went to see uh lotus and lane but i went to see them in in person Mm -hmm. yeah i went to Mm -hmm. see them in person here in scottsdale Mm -hmm. and they had some bags there and it was so difficult not to buy one i mean they're expensive i didn't have the money but i'm like do you take credit (laughs) and my wife was staring at them too because like i buy i buy like coach and michael kors Uh stuff for her Uh all the time and they're well made and like they'll last you a long time or whatever but it's not the same romanticism yeah yeah like you said like it's a romanticism it truly is but it's like this couple, this beautiful couple, this nice people out yeah. there in, the, in a reservation that's beautiful and they're making things they're by hand kids. with their kids. Yeah. Oh, it's so romantic. How I can you love not? them so much. Like yeah. I admire them Good so people. much because they, they do beautiful work and they're always inspired by like their heritage and the land that yeah. they're tending to. And they're just freaking awesome. Eventually like, I asked Lamendez to I be on. Yeah, you should because he's really, really sweet. He's a very yeah, great guy. Such a cool guy. It was awesome just getting to meet him, <laughs> talking to them a little bit, shaking his head. Yeah, no, absolutely. I All wish right. uh, if COVID wasn't happening, I would be over there visiting them too, probably. Oh, they're yeah. awesome. like probably <laughs> learning something too, because I'm yes. sure all of you have your own like different like method behind the madness type of thing. Absolutely. Like I do things this way and yeah. I do things this way. So it's like, it, you know, I, I think it'd be fun to learn. Absolutely. Yeah, I have no interest in learning anytime soon. I have so many things on my plate, but maybe someday. Someday, if, dude. When I my, got my, you. When my body's all beat up from all the stuff I do, and I just want to oh, do something dude. small. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. If you ever need any tips or tricks or you want cheap tools or anything like that, let me know. And I, I still have all the screenshots from like the first tool set that I purchased. So I got you. That's awesome. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. See you on the next episode. All right, Carlos. (laughs) Have a good one. Thank you so much. All right, bye. All right, hasta luego. Bye.